Good day everyone and welcome back. For this video presentation, I will discuss two important workarounds of quantitative method, the modeling and simulation. These two are used in making decisions since they serve as a prototypes that can be helpful in predicting performance in real world. All right, we have modeling. When we say modeling, it's all about models. A model, by all means, has different interpretation based on its purpose to summarize an understanding of a something. In the present context, we are specifically concerned with modeling as part of the skill of thinking and acting systemically. To pursue this lesson, we need to have a unified definition of a model upon taking this course, and that is a model is a simplified representation of some person's or group's view of a situation, constructed to assist in working with that situation in a systemic manner. Although we might not feel that instances we are using already models, for example, maps and plans, are models of the layout of the roads, rivers, buildings, or other features of our physical environment. The graphs and tables used to sell financial products are models of the expected performance of those products. All our interactions with the world around us depend on our internal mental models of how we perceive that world. Why we use quantitative models? Why do we need to quantify things? Four main conditions are necessary for a quantitative model to be an appropriate choice. Number one, at the chosen level of aggregation. All the significant features or behaviors of the system must be adequately quantified. Number two, the purpose should involve a level of discrimination or differentiation that can only be achieved by quantitative comparisons. Number three, there is a significant number of interacting feedback loops you are likely to be forced to use a quantitative model to understand what is going on. Lastly, the behavior or features of the system of interest are governed by stochastic processes, stochastic or random processes. Here, a range of result is possible, but you cannot know in advance exactly which result will occur, although you may know the chance formally the probability of a particular result occur. Next in my presentation is I'm going to introduce to you the type of quantitative models. There are two types of quantitative models, the dynamic and static models. The dynamic models are those where the set of calculations comprising the model is repeated several times. The initial values of the variables in the current set of calculations are taken from the results of the previous set of calculations. And this process is repeated time and time again. So that is dynamic. As you can see in the table, here are some examples of dynamic quantitative models. We also have static models. The calculations are executed once to obtain a result or a set of results. Even where the calculations are repeated, as with stochastic models, the values in each set of calculations is not determined by the previous calculations. Take a good look of the samples under each type of quantitative model. Have you ever worked one or more of these models? Share your experience in the comment section below. Next, we have simulation. A simulation is an imitation of some real thing state of affairs or process. The act of simulating something generally entails representing certain key characteristics or behaviors of a selected physical or abstract system. We have here some sample of a finished product simulation. Car simulator 
are used in different ways like the sample from the University of Valencia, Spain. This simulator is used in evaluation of drivers, roads, IVIS devices, and other areas before they go to the real street. Another is the U.S. military training in West Point Simulation Center in U.S. Simulation has its advantage and disadvantage. Number one of the advantages of simulation is that most complex real-world systems with stochastic elements cannot be accurately described by a mathematical model. A simulation is often the only type of investigation possible. Number two, estimate the performance of an existing system. Number three, it gives alternative proposed system designs. Number four, maintain much better control over experimental conditions. Number five of its advantage, study a system with a long time frame. There is also a disadvantage of using simulation. Each run of a stochastic simulation model produces only estimates of a model's true characteristics for a particular set of input parameters. It is expensive. It has to display realistic details that hardware and software must be well paired, dependent to the validity of the model to simulate. If a model is not a valid, representation of a system under study, the simulation results, no matter how impressive they appear, will provide little useful information about the actual system. In conclusion, modeling and simulation are very useful endeavor in quantitative methods since they generate performance data. These data are used in the process of making informed decision and analyzing probability of events.